In this episode of How RV Things Work, we're going to look at the Progressive Industries Hardwired EMS, part number EMS-HW30C. This is the 30 amp version, although a 50 amp version is also available. So the first question is, what is the difference between an EMS and a surge suppressor? Well, a surge suppressor only takes care of voltage surges, such as what you might find from lightning or anomalies on the power line from switching, motor starts, things like that. And EMS does that, plus it monitors the voltage and the current and will shut down the RV if the voltage becomes unsafe. So say in a brownout condition where the voltage drops, in this case with this one, below 104 volts AC, or the frequency is off by a certain amount, or you have a high voltage condition. This will automatically disconnect the RV to prevent damage from unsafe power conditions. I've done several videos on EMS systems, comparing one brand with another and showing operationally how they work. So we're not gonna go through that. We're just gonna look inside here and see what makes it tick. This is certified UL, and I don't have the particular UL standard to know what the certification consists of. However, UL certification is generally concerned with safety. And this is a hardwired one, so this one gets installed in your RV versus a portable one where you just attach it to the end of your shore power cable. And it's available in two types. One with a remote readout like this, and the other with a readout that's built into the box. There's a few dollar difference between the remote readout and the built-in readout, but it's less than a 10% difference. And in my view, the utility of being able to read the remote readout is much better than saving a few dollars. And we also have a serial data line. This is just basically a telephone line. Without further ado, let's open this up and see what we have. On the inside, we have three basic items. We have a contactor, which is basically just a relay. We have a MOV board, which is the surge suppressor. And then we have a control board. We also have a current sensing transformer. And the way this works is it's a coil of wire. And when you put the hot wire through here, then some magnetism gets induced into this coil of wire from current going through the hot wire. And that's how it measures the current. And these parts are all modular. And for example, we can take the MOV board out. It is replaceable. Now you may notice that only half of the parts are populated in this board, and that is because the same exact board is used for the 50 amp version. So with a 30 amp, we have one leg of 120 volts AC. With a 50 amp, it's actually 240 volts with a center tap neutral, sometimes called a split phase. And then you would have the MOVs populating the other side. And these MOVs are 20D391KS. The 20D is the size, 20 millimeters in diameter. The 391 means 390 volts. And there's two of those on the board. And one of these goes from the hot wire to the neutral. The other one goes from the hot wire to ground. Also, there are two larger MOVs, and those are 20D122KS. The same 20 millimeter diameter, but 122 is 1200 volts. And with these, these are in series, which actually gives us double the voltage. So instead of 1200 volts, these work on 2400 volts. And this goes from neutral to ground. There is also a fuse in here, and that fuse is designed so that if this MOV ever blows, that will remove power from the MOV. I'm a little surprised that they're using a standard fuse here. The white papers from Little Fuse and other manufacturers that I've read, they recommend using a thermal fuse rather than a current fuse. So I'm a little bit puzzled why they're using a standard fuse, but I suppose that's engineering prerogative. The contactor, of course, is just a switch. When the control board decides that the power meets the requirements, then it will close the switch and power the RV. And there's actually another MOV on the control board. And I suspect that that MOV is to protect the control board itself. And we also see 
uh, marking LBU2 version 1.9. I'm going to guess that that is a microcontroller of some kind, probably a PIC, but with a label on the cover, we really can't tell. So this box is under a firmware control and we also have an adjustment here which doesn't really state what it's for so i'm not going to mess with it we also have a jumper here and the owner's manual does state that that jumper can be removed if you need to have a longer delay time on restarts so here's the scenario we have this thing in the rv and then something goes wrong with the power either the power goes off or it gets a low voltage this will turn off and the EMS unit will normally apply power to the RV 15 seconds after power is restored. However, if the jumper is removed, it will wait 2 minutes and 16 seconds after power is restored before applying power to the RV. And this is a scenario. Say we have an air conditioner that is running. When you turn power off on an air conditioner, you can't normally turn the power back on immediately because you'll get a compressor stall. What happens is the compressor has more resistance to turning when it's been in operation and it needs to have time for the pressure to dissipate before you can start it again. Some air conditioners have an internal delay so that if you turn the power right off and right back on, it will delay so many seconds before it restarts so that you don't occur that pressure situation. If the air conditioner does not have that, then you can remove this jumper and this will delay a longer period of time to allow the air compressor to recover. It really depends on what kind of air compressor you have in your air conditioner, whether or not you have this in or out. The chip also goes to this modular connector which drives this remote box. And if we remove the remote from the cover, we will see another microcontroller, probably another PIC chip. This will take the serial data input in here and drive the display, as well as the other two wires will follow this on off switch. This allows us to bypass the EMS if it is acting faulty or we're running a generator or for some other reason the EMS won't start. I did scope this with a data analyzer and I could not see what kind of data protocol that it's using. So I'm going to assume that it's a proprietary protocol. One thing that I should criticize Progressive Industries on is, you know, this is pretty much 1980s technology here. And it's probably time that they upgrade their system. You can buy LCD displays nowadays for not much more than what it costs for these LED readouts. These used to be really cheap, but since they're not as common anymore, they started to go up in price. And you can virtually buy an LCD display color sometimes for not much more than these. And also, the competition is going to Bluetooth. Both the Hughes and the Southwire SureGuard system both have Bluetooth capability. Now, the SureGuard system has a proprietary display, and you cannot use a smartphone, whereas with the Hughes display system, you can use a smartphone. I want to encourage Progressive Industries to put the word progressive back into their products and upgrade their display. From what I see, this could be plug and play, wherein no changes would be necessary in the main control unit. Everything should be able to be done in the display unit. It would simply be a matter of displaying the data output from the control box by an upgraded monitor. That way, owners that wanted to upgrade to such a display could simply purchase it and install it to their existing system. I would like to see the remote have a LCD display and provide the following data. Simultaneous readout of voltage, current, and frequency and for the 50 amp versions, simultaneously display of both legs. You know, many of us have 50 amp coaches, and we often have to go to 30 amp RV sites, and that requires some power management decisions. Do you run the air conditioner? Do you run the microwave? Do you run whatever? I often look at my display to see how much current I'm consuming before I turn certain things on and off. Also, a histograph showing the voltage, current, and frequency changes over the last 24 hours would be helpful. And these days, Bluetooth is everything to a lot of people, so an app providing the information from the display on a smartphone.
And again, the beauty of these boards is they're removable, which means if you fry an MOV board, for instance, you can replace that board without having to buy a whole new unit. You know, again, this is 1980s technology, nothing really special. These components have been around forever. 